What's up and welcome to 17 Non. Today we're making a little dish made up of oxtail. To be honest, I had no idea what I was going to make for this recipe. I had some oxtail and I thought I'd just go with the flow. Normally when I think about oxtail, I want to eat a Jamaican curry. But also in this recipe, I wanted to have a Malaysian influence as I think those flavour profiles also work really well with oxtail. Overall, I had fun playing around with a recipe on the spot. And sometimes that's the best thing about cookery, just simply having fun. And with all that said, let's get straight into this recipe. Right off the bat, let's get cooking some oxtail. We want to braise this long enough so that it's able to fall off the bone when cooked. First, let's season the oxtail generously with salt. Just before we braise, we want to sear the oxtail until nicely caramelised. The reason for this is that it's going to add a ton of flavour. Add some rapeseed oil to a hot pan, then throw in the oxtail. As I said before, we want to sear this on all sides until nice and caramelised. Usually I'd boil the oxtail prior to cooking them, which is more of the Asian way. But for this recipe, I want to do the French way by searing them, which I find will add way more flavour to the braise. Continue to rotate and sear the oxtail until evenly caramelised. When ready, remove from the pan and go ahead and place these to one side for now. Now let's move on to thinking about the braise. For the braise, we're going to mimic the flavours that we make the curry. First, let's roughly slice up two shallots, cut three tomatoes up in half, roughly chop three to five dried red chilies. you can leave the seeds in if you like, and finally we're going to need half a bulb of garlic. Now to start the braise, place a large pot onto a high heat then add all of the seared oxtail. A pressure cooker would also actually be pretty good, but I don't actually have one. To the oxtail we can now add all of the chopped vegetables. Next, add 2 tablespoons of tomato puree and 2 tablespoons of ketchup manis. Continue to roast to get rid of the rawness from the tomato puree. Next, add 2-3 to three generous tablespoons of mild curry powder. Give this a quick stir, then we can go in and add 1.5 litres of good chicken stock. Bring the liquid up to a boil, then when boiling, turn down to a gentle simmer. When at a simmer, I place a thing called a cartouche over the top and the cartouche will prevent the liquid from boiling over and also to keep the oxtail nice and submerged. Finally, place a lid over the top and let the oxtail braise for four to five hours. Now to make some curry. I wanted this curry to have a Malaysian influence as I think those flavors work really well with oxtail. First, let's slice and remove the seeds from three tomatoes. Next, crush four to five garlic cloves, roughly slice 10 grams of ginger, Slice 8 to 10 hydrated dried red chilies and roughly chop one shallot. And these vegetables will form the perfect base for our curry paste. Before we move on, let's first roast some cashew nuts. Add around 20 grams worth and roast until nice and toasted. Place the cashews to one side and add a drizzle of oil back into the pan. Now we can add all the vegetables and cook until soft and fragrant. The combination of dried red chilies and tomato is exactly what we're looking for for the base for this curry. To enhance the flavour of tomato, we can also add in 2 tablespoons of tomato puree. Cook out the puree to get rid of the rawness, then we can add the spices. Throw in 2 tablespoons of mild curry powder, 2 teaspoons of turmeric and a pinch of salt. Continue to cook and by this point, things start to smell pretty damn good already. When the vegetables have softened, we can deglaze the pan with 100ml of water. Bring the liquid up to a boil, then reduce by half. When reduced, we can remove from the heat and add everything into a blender. This is not really a traditional way to make a curry paste, but at the moment I'm just going with the flow. Add the toasted cashews also, then blend until smooth. After 2-3 to three minutes, the paste should be there. Remove from the blender, then it's time to see what's going on. The paste is a little bit wet, but that's fine, we're going to finish this later. And as for the flavour profile, it wasn't too spicy and had a good aroma of tomato and cashew. Place to one side and we'll make a curry out of you later. Now to make some pickled red onion. The idea behind this is that I needed something to cut through the richness of the oxtail. To make the pickle liquid in a small bowl, add 100 ml of distilled vinegar and 2 tablespoons of white sugar. Mix this really well until the sugar is completely dissolved. Next, peel and slice one red onion into rings. When ready, gather all the good ones and add to the pickle liquid. And now we can leave these to pickle until we're ready to serve.
now let's head back to the braise. After a good 4-5 to five hours of cooking, the oxtail should now be ready. Remove the cartouche thingy, then check to see if the oxtail is falling off the bone. This looks pretty good, so we can now go ahead and remove the oxtail from the braise. Place into a large bowl and allow to slightly cool. As you can see, the oxtail is super tender and falling off the bone, however we still want to take this to that next level. As for the remaining braise, we can go ahead and pass this for a fine sieve. This may contain a little bit of fat from the oxtail, but that's exactly what we're looking for. Place the braise back onto our high heat and reduce by 3 quarters. And as for the oxtail, when slightly cooled, we can go ahead and remove the meat from the bone. And whilst doing this, try to fight the temptation of not eating too much. Let the oxtail sit here for a little bit, let's go back to the braise. Whilst reducing, I was thinking we need a little texture for this filling. Peel and slice one potato into a small dice. Add the diced potato to the braise, and this will not only add texture but also thicken things up. When reduced, remove from the heat and allow to slightly cool. Now going back to the oxtail, use a spatula or fork to shred the meat. When ready, add a few tablespoons to the reduced braise. Do this slowly as we don't want the filling to be too dry or too loose. Mix well that we can go ahead and season again with a pinch of salt and some more curry powder. Adjust the seasoning if needed, then the filling is ready. And all that's left to do now is to bunch up the filling into small balls. And as for how big they are, they're probably the size of a golf ball. What's cool also is the fat from the braise is going to help these things set. When ready, cover with cling film and let these guys chill in the fridge for at least one hour. Fast forward an hour and the oxtail is ready to work with. And what we want to do now is to dredge these in the classic mix of flour, egg wash and breadcrumbs. To dredge, first let's add a ball of oxtail to the flour. Dust off any excess and add to the egg wash. Coat really well, then add the oxtail to the panko. Coat generously, then throw back into the egg wash one more time. And after this, yep, you guessed it, back into the panko breadcrumbs. And the reason for doing this twice is to add a little extra security when it comes to frying. And there we have it, kind of looks like a weird snowball. Place onto a tray, then repeat this for each ball of oxtail. Before we cook, let's go back and finish the curry. Place a pan onto a medium heat and add some of the curry paste that we made earlier. Dry fry the paste for a few minutes until the aromas come out. When fragrant, we can now add 400ml of coconut milk. Mix in the coconut milk, then to sweeten things up, we can go ahead and add 2 tablespoons of palm sugar. Bring the curry up to a boil, then reduce by half. And after 10 to 15 minutes of reducing, the curry should look like this, and it's now ready. Just the seasoning if needed, then keep this warm for now. To cook the oxtail, we're going to deep fry. Bring a pan of cooking oil up to 160 degrees centigrade. When hot enough, we can go ahead and add the oxtail in batches. Try not to add too much at one time as this will drop the temperature of the oil. Also try and keep the oxtail moving around as this will prevent them from burning. And after 5 or 6 minutes of frying, the oxtail should now be ready. Golden and delicious. Carefully remove these from the oil and drain off any excess. Place onto a wire rack, season with salt and we're finally ready to serve. to it, the dish is ready. Honestly, I had a ton of fun freestyling making up a recipe like this. And sometimes I find it's better to just go with the flow and have fun with what you're doing. The overall dish was damn delicious, but of course I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Try out the recipe and see this for yourself. And with all that said, this was fun and thanks for stopping by. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you have, thanks for your support and I truly appreciate it. And until next time, have fun and peace.